Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoteric and a continuing series, What? Why? Where I took a look at some of my favorite video games that are weird or absurd at face value, and today we have a really fun one, LSD Dream Emulator. This game's been talked about a lot, but I think I'm going to try to do it ever so slightly different. Before we get too far involved, though, do me a huge favor, go down below, hit like, subscribe, and that notification bell definitely helps us out. And if you feel so inclined to want to support the channel, we got a Patreon link down below as well. But this game was conceived by an artist, Osamu Sato, who was a photographer and other visual artist. And it definitely shows through the minute you start to play this game, because it has a sense of artistry to it that is unlike a lot of other video games. And calling this a game in its own right is a very hard statement to make, because even though you do have control of a player character, and there is some very vague outlined goal as to what you want to do, this is more of an interactive art piece that is just using the medium of video games and a PlayStation 1 to exhibit itself. You could put this on a monitor at a museum and call it art, not a video game, and it would basically feel the exact same way it's just that sense of being able to control your avatar and the fact that it released on a playstation 1 disc that makes it a game but lsd dream emulator always gets brought up in the weirdest list of video games of all time and it definitely qualifies for that but all it's really doing and it says it right in the title is it's a dream emulator because i don't know what your dreams are like but i will say time and time again my dreams pivot on a dime to some of the most absurd things you could possibly imagine i'll be in one place and then all of a sudden and I'll be halfway across the world doing something completely different. And that's generally how dreams go. They don't really have a cohesive story arc to them because it is your brain just kind of firing off an experiential memory in an out of order situation that doesn't make any sense, which is exactly what this game is doing. And in that respect, it really does seem like a dream because how do you go from a waterfall to a sumo wrestling match, which looks like it has the texture on the wall of maybe soybeans or popcorn, something to that effect. It's articulating what the dream process feels like in and of itself and that's just to say nothing makes sense you never know where you're going you're never quite sure what's going to happen next and sometimes you have the same dream and different things happen because in this game you can go through the same doorway twice and end up in a completely different area i've seen this sumo area more than once and i've got here more than one different way and this hallway has been different each time i have seen it and it's just like a dream you're never quite sure what's going to happen next but you know it's going to be weird and you come around this corner here and you see what look like cupid dolls just jumping up and down and basically the way you move from quote unquote level to level in this game is you just touch something or you go through a doorway you'll see here just walking around you're never sure what's going to trigger the next event you're just kind of meandering through the world if you take a left and walk towards these characters touching that railing just transports you to a city somewhere in a downtown region it doesn't make any logical sense and the game does have a map and technically you can quote unquote die if you fall into a chasm. It just restarts to the next day of the dream in the game's logic and you just kind of continue along. But I just ran into a wall and now I'm back in the starting house walking up the stairs. It's just a map that you can never quite keep track of and you're never quite sure what you're going to see. As you go further into the game, this house does seem to change and pivot some, and you will see here that now all of a sudden one of these alcoves, there's two teddy bears in front of a television that has rabbit ears and kind of looks like it has a horror scene on it. And that's just your brain on dreams. It wouldn't be weird to have a dream where a teddy bear is walking around in front of a horror movie house. That's just how they work. And then you get something like this scape right here. And I will say, this game's soundtrack feels like a dream. It's not so much a soundtrack as it is a soundscape. So go ahead and listen for like 45 seconds to come back and tell you more about how LSD Dream Emulator is a weird but intriguing game. Enjoy! <laughs>
It's just a very strange soundtrack, but it works in the world of LSD Dream Emulator. It just doesn't make any sense. Even the footprints, those sounds when you're walking around, they change ever so slightly. Sometimes they sound like a kind of a squeaky toy. Other times they sound like tap shoes. Other times they sound like high heels. You're never quite sure what you even are in this game, and that's really interesting. And I do love the faceless people that on occasion show up and you're really not quite sure what's going on. You just keep following this woman around and eventually you get close enough to her that her head just falls off. And if you've never read as a kid scary stories to read in the dark, there's a story about a woman who wears a ribbon around her neck and when someone finally takes it off, her head collapses and it reminds me exactly of that. And I probably still have dreams about that book because why did they give that to kids? They definitely shouldn't have. But you'll see there I died intentionally to show you sometimes what happens. We just end up on a roof after we restart the game, and we can walk back down into the same house. But quote-unquote dying, and I don't even know that's what happens in this game, actually progresses the story. It seems to be that there's some areas that you can't actually see unless you die and go back into the game. But I could also be completely wrong about that as well, because honestly, trying to understand the underlying mechanics of this game would probably require somebody to take the code and decompile it to be able to actually read out what's going on. Because every time you think you have some idea of how to make this game work for you, it goes and does something that makes no sense and totally throws you back on your heels and you realize everything you thought you knew was incorrect. But that's a really fun perspective to play a game from because so many games are, you know, linear. They explain the goal, they tell you what to do, you go and do it, sometimes there's a puzzle here and there, but for the most part you know going in what's expected of you out of a certain video game. In this instance though, you have absolutely no idea what to do, what you should be doing, or whether or not what you're doing is even progressing the quote-unquote story forward and there is a really 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 small story in this game but it's kind of open to interpretation as to what's going on but we can't talk about this game without the graphics because they're ugly but intentionally so and that big crow sitting up there it's just a mix of very poorly drawn textures that repeat over and over again and don't even make much sense and flat shaded polygons but every once in a while you will get to an environment like this Japanese village here that does look as true to life as you could pull off in the PlayStation 1 era. We have fences, we have dirt, we have trees, we have brick walls. Ever so often this game is just going to show you something that actually does make sense and that even feels weirder in LSD Dream Emulator because so many things don't make sense whatsoever when you finally find an area that does adhere to what a normal world would look like, it kind of makes you feel uncomfortable because you're expecting more of this, the wackiness that the game has been showing you so far. And that's what it would be like if you're having a dream and everything just felt like normal life because you usually, if you can tell you're in a dream, you know it's not your normal life, something is different about it. But imagine having a dream that just felt like a regular day in your life where everything adhered to what you actually know when you're awake. That might be the most uncomfortable dream of all because you might not even know whether or not you were dreaming at that moment in time. And that's what it's like to see a normal environment in this game. It doesn't feel right. Things should be weird. And when you hit the normal, you kind of just don't know what's going on. But then you get to an environment like this where there's this giant you know, street sign in the middle of the desert where it wouldn't be. And the sun has all these sparkles on it. And there's a shark fin sticking out of the water. This is when you really know you're in the dream in this game. But LSD Dream Emulator is not for everybody, obviously. It's a fun game to check out and experience because it is so new and unique and different for its time and place but honestly understanding it and figuring out what's going on and actually making progress is definitely an exercise in frustration because you do not know what's going on and I've never seen this entire game even playing it because after a while you do start looping back on areas you've been to before and you're never quite sure whether or not you've explored everything or if there's one section of the map that you just haven't touched yet that will cause you to go to a new area because some of the activatable spots are literally just brushing up against walls. So this game, just like a dream, can be fleeting and frustrating and you'll never be quite sure if you've seen it all. But as an art style experience, I highly recommend you check it out and that is why it's on What Why as a series. But leave me a comment down below. Have you ever played LSD Dream Emulator? Have you heard of it? I'm sure if you've read a list of the top 10 weirdest video games of all time, you're at least familiar with it. Sure, that'll be back next week with another episode in this series. I'll have videos the week as well. But let's walk across the bridge there and wonder what is on the other side. We may never actually know. See you guys next time. Bye-bye.